are afraid. A lot of people are afraid. In Brussels, people are just out of their mind. In Europe, people are afraid. The state of alert is red. <laughs> They're all watching and waiting for something to happen. Terrorists are killing indiscriminately. Men, women, and children, they're killing. They're killing their own. They're killing those that they call infidels. And when they are successful, they celebrate. They celebrate. What a world we are living in. Where people can look in the eyes of someone as those men, as they walked into the airport or the subway, looked in the eyes of the people and detonate a bomb, killing innocent people. What a world we're living in. And uh, this weekend, the world is celebrating Easter. But many people who are celebrating Easter, they do not remember the story of Easter. They're looking at all the celebrations, the drinking and the partying and all of that. So the world is heading down the wrong road. I pray that we're not heading along with it. That we are on a different road. We have our eyes fixed on Jesus. As I contemplate what is happening in the world, I see the devastation that sin has wrought in the lives of many. And so what was wrong is now right. And we are now a planet in rebellion. Serious rebellion, as a matter of fact. I think of the mother eagle as she nurtures her baby eagle. For weeks, she would take food and feed that young one until it starts to grow and it was ready to fly. But that little eagle could not fly. So the mother eagle would take that little bird and put it on its back and fly as high as it could, can go. High up. And then that mother eagle would let the baby fall. And I would imagine as that baby eagle was falling, he was screaming, ah! I'm going to crash. And it can see the ground coming closer and closer. And it, as it was about to hit the ground, the mother eagle would swoop in, and catch the baby eagle, and swoop up into the sky again. The baby eagle must have said, ah, that was close. <laughs> I'm glad I won't have to do that again. But the mother eagle went high again and let her fall. And she would do that over and over and over until the baby eagle did this. And it started to fly. My friends, we're living in a world where we're about to crash. But God, in his infinite love, my friends, came swooping in, sending his son, Jesus Christ, into the world to save you and I. So that we would not have to fall and die because the wages of sin is death. But praise God for the gift 
of life that is found in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, this morning we appreciate you for who you are, and that is our Savior, who left your magnificent throne and came as a man, lived as a man, died my death, our death, so that we can again be redeemed and have a place in your kingdom, have a place in front of you, in your presence. Help us, Lord, to appreciate your death, to appreciate your life, to appreciate what you're doing for us now. And maybe, just maybe, we will live for you, even die for you. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Message this morning is entitled, They Led Him Away. And in John chapter 19, verse 16, he tells us, Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. That is Pilate. And they took Jesus and led him away. Let's think for a moment of Jesus as he was condemned. Also, let's think, can we think two things at the same time? Let's try to think two things at the same time. Think of Jesus as he was led away. And also think of the crown prince who was given a beautiful bride and they are marching down the road and he's showing his bride and as he goes, he's waving to the crowd. Jesus on one side as he was led away up Golgotha and this prince and his bride as he was marching through the streets. All eyes, I would imagine, were fixed on both. For one, the prince and his bride, there was joy in the procession. Everyone wanted to see the prince and his bride. But Jesus, as he walked, only jeers and indifference. The prince and his bride were well dressed in royal robe while Jesus was dressed in his plain robe. The honor guards were standing, but there were the soldiers beside Jesus. The prince and his bride had their crowns on, sparkling. But Jesus, as he walked down, he had a crown of thorns. He had a crown of thorns. Adoration, my friends, for one. Insult and jeers for the other. Long live the king, for one, they cried. But crucify him, crucify him, others cried. Could it ever be that one day we could appreciate Jesus as he walked down Golgotha's road more than we will appreciate a prince or a king as he journeys along? Could it be that we could appreciate Jesus as he carries his cross more than the mightiest of individual who walks down the road? Could it be? Let us follow Jesus as he walks down the road of Golgotha. Think of yourself as being in the crowd. In Matthew chapter 27, verse 26. Matthew 27, verse 26. Then released he Barabbas unto them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. 
it was always the custom of the Romans to scourge a person who was condemned. Once that sentence comes down, the first thing that happened was that that individual was scourged. And the instrument that was used to scourge that condemned person was known as a flag rum. It was a whip that had metal at the end tied to strips of leather. And that individual would be beaten to the point of death. And when they saw that that individual was at the point of death, they would stop. Because they wanted that person who was condemned to experience the death of the condemnation, and that was crucifixion. They did not want to beat him to death. They want to beat him to almost death. And then they would crucify. So when Jesus was condemned, the first thing that happened was that they scourged him. In Deuteronomy 25, verse 3, the Jews had a limit to their scourging. Let's look at it. Deuteronomy 25, verse 3. Then released he... Deuteronomy 25, verse 3. And it says, Forty stripes he may give him, and not exceed... How many stripes? Forty. Forty stripes they were to be given. And they should not exceed the forty stripes. But my friends, the Romans did not have such a rule. They would beat you until you almost die. In Isaiah 53, 5 and 6. Isaiah 53, 5 and 6. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised. For what? For our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, how can it be that we are healed? All we, like sheep, have gone astray. Yes, we have, every single one of us. We have turned everyone from his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. We have all turned and gone our own way, but it tells us that on him was laid our iniquity. The penalty for my sin, for my wrongdoing, he paid it. Why would he do such a thing? Isaiah 50 verse 6 tells us of what they would do to Jesus. I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. That is what he did for you and I. Isaiah 52, verse 14. As many as were a stone, a stone, a stone, a stone at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. And then we go back to verse 27 of Matthew says, after he was scourged, the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him his whole band of soldiers. Can you imagine? Jesus was condemned, given over to the soldiers, and they all converged on him. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head, and a reed in his hand. And they bowed the knee before him, and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit 
upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that, they had mocked him. They took the robe off him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. Why would anyone go through that? Why would it? Would you go through that for somebody? A parent, would you go through that for your child? A child, would you go through that for your, your parents? Friend, would you go through that for your friend? Husband, would you go through that for your wife or wife for your husband? But would you go through that for your enemy? What do you normally want to do to your enemy? You want to kill them. You want to beat them. <laughs> you want to shame them. But would you die for them? Would you die for your enemy? So they put his robe back on and they started to walk him up the road to Golgotha. Let's stand in the crowd and let's watch. Jesus weighed down with the cross, struggling on Golgotha's road. He was just beaten. His back was all marred. Because the, the metal on the, on the whip cut through his back and so he was bleeding profusely. He had not slept all night. He had not eaten. And my friends, he was weak as he carried that cross. And as he carried the cross, he fell along the way, bleeding and struggling. He fell again. But the soldiers, they wanted to get along with it. They wanted to carry out the sentence. The people were saying, let's get there. Let's do it. The high priests were saying, why are you delaying? Let's move faster. But falling and groaning along the way with the cross, my friends, Jesus could not move any faster. The crowd looked on and maybe asked the question, is this the great teacher? Is this the man who said he is the Messiah? Is this the great healer, the one that called Lazarus back from the dead? Is it really the man that healed the leper? Just a few days before that, there was a great sound of excitement. Jesus was riding into Jerusalem on an ass. People took off their clothes, laid it on the roads. People cut uh, palm branches, laid it on the roads. Blessed is he who come in the name of the Lord. But today, no longer do they hail him. Today, they spat on him. Today, they cursed him. Today, they shamed him. My friends, today, we stand and we watch him struggling with the cross. Every day we live our lives and we too, my friends, are standing watching him carrying the cross. He was carried on the road to Golgotha, the place of death. He was being taken to a place of shame. In Isaiah 53, 3 and 4, it tells us he was despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we has esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He was led out of the city no longer allowed to fellowship with his brethren. Now he was an outcast, no longer a friend, but now an enemy. He was banished from their society. 
the Lamb of God. And meekly, meekly he struggled with the cross. Up the road to Golgotha to be slaughtered. John 19, verse 17. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of the skull, which is called in the Hebrew, Golgotha. He bore the load of the cross, but he was weak from the beating. He was moving slowly. Why isn't it? Why wasn't it that some of his disciples didn't rush in and say, let me carry the cross? I've been following you for three and a half years. Let me carry the cross for you. Where were his brothers there, his brethren? Where were they? Let me carry the cross for you. At least I will ease your burden for a little while. My friends, you and I, we're standing there. Carrying the cross. And we stand there and we do nothing. We do nothing as he carries the cross. But then, there was this man, his name was Simon, and they came out and they found the man of Cyrene, Simon by name, him they compelled to carry the cross. They had to compel someone to carry the cross. Jesus did not suffer that we would not suffer. Jesus did not suffer so that we should not suffer. All those who will live godly must suffer persecution. He carried the cross not that we should be free and stand on the sideline and watch. Christ forgives us of our sins, but he does not take away the sorrow for our sin. Because until you get to the place where you're sorrowful for sin, you cannot carry the cross. Matthew 16, verse 24, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up the cross, his cross, and follow me. You want to come after Jesus? You see him struggling along the way? Deny yourself, my friends. Don't stand on the sidelines and say, I don't want to be shamed. Because when I take the cross, I will take his shame. When I take the cross, I have to deny myself. When I take the cross, my friends, I'm now the spectacle. All eyes will be on me. Jesus takes the curse of the cross from you and I. It is not our cross, but it is Christ's cross that we carry. He carried a cross as we walked behind him. Because as I can imagine that when Simon took that cross, Jesus was ahead of him. And he was walking behind Jesus with the cross. It is a partnership. Simon did not volunteer to take the cross. He was commanded to take the cross. But once he took the cross, he understood the experience of carrying the cross. Many times, you and I, my friends, we have to be commanded to carry the cross. We will not willfully take it up. But once we take up the cross, my friends, it changes our lives. Once Simon took up the cross, he was never the same again. Today, we are talking about him. 
and he will live throughout eternity. His name will live throughout eternity because he took up the cross. Though Simon bore the cross for such a short time, he was honored for eternity. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 17. For these light afflictions, which is but for a million years, just for a moment worketh for us a far more exceeding eternal and eternal weight of glory. We may think that we are struggling now. We may think that because we have made the decision to walk with God and the devil is just beating us all over. But my friends, it's only for a moment. When we compare the life that we live to eternity, it is only for a moment. Hold on. Don't let go. Hold on to Jesus. Continue to be strong. Continue to walk and carry the cross. We should love the cross and not be ashamed of it. Matthew chapter 10, 38. And he that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Jesus himself said that. But as we watched the procession, we saw that there was a great crowd in, in uh, Luke chapter 23, verses 27 to 31. And there followed him a great company of people and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. Maybe that could have caused him to feel a little better. At least there were a few people who felt badly about what was being done to me. But Jesus turned, turning unto them said, daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear and the paps which never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us and to the hills cover us. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? Do not weep because your Savior bled, but because your sins and mine caused him to bleed. We should not weep for those who have brought that blood upon their heads. Weep, my friends, for sinful men and women all around us. Don't weep. Because Jesus is carrying the cross. He's carrying it so that we can live. And many times we see people around us and we do not have the heart of Christ. As Jesus looked over Jerusalem, he said, oh Jerusalem, oh Jerusalem, how often would I want to just take you as a hen would take her chicken? And just cover you. But you would not. We look around us. We see our family members. We see our, our friends. Are growing in the wrong way. Do we weep for them? Do we care about them? Don't weep for me Jesus said. Weep for yourselves. Because a few years later. Jerusalem would be surrounded by the Romans. And they would be besieged. Women would start eating their children because of hunger. Many would die. Jesus spoke of two things. The destruction of Jerusalem and the final day when he would come in glory. And they would see his face and they would run to the rocks and to the mountains and say, fall on us and hide us from his face. 
Don't weep for me. Don't weep for me. As we stand there, we can see two others carrying crosses. They were thieves. And they were guilty. Both of them were guilty. And we find that story in Matthew 23, 39 to 43. One of the male factors which were hung railed him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest in thy kingdom. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today, I'm telling you right now, thou shalt be with me in paradise. In the end, as Christ was nailed to the cross, one thief on the right, one thief on the left. They were both guilty. Both deserving to die. In between the spotless Lamb of God. Today, my friends, as we sit here, we can be either the one on the right or the one on the left. It's based on the decision that you will make. One railed him, condemned him, cursed him. The other asked for forgiveness. And that day on the cross, as he was dying, the heart of Christ was revealed. He offered life. He offered life as his hands were stretched out. He offered life. Today, I will give you life. Today, he wants to give you life. And give you life more abundantly. When I think of the cross, I see the arms of Jesus. I hear him saying, O Jerusalem, O Jerusalem. You who have killed the prophets, how often would I want to just wrap you around like the hen would wrap her chickens? That's the way he's, he's crying out today. Andrea Midget told the story of how she went into her parents' barn one day, a cold morning, to check on the horses and the chickens that were in the barn. When she got there, it was so cold that the water in the trough for the horses was all frozen over. And beside the trough was a mother hen. She had her face pointed towards the cold, the cold wind that was coming through into the barn. And she could see that her feather, or her wings were stretched out like this. And on the, her wings were her little chickens. And she wondered, she wondered, did the mother hen have to go and search for the chickens for them to come to her? Did she have to, had, did she have to run all night seeking them? Or did she just made a sound, opened her wings, and they came running for comfort, for safety? My friends, it's time for us to stop running away from Jesus. It's time for us to stop fighting what we know is truth. 
time for us, my friends, to come under the arms of Jesus. Be protected. Where you will be safe. She stated that she could see that the mother hen's wings were getting tired. But she still kept them out. And she saw one little chick on top of the wings. She wondered what happened. How come all the others are under the wings? And they're feeling the warmth of the mother. While this one is on top, feeling the brunt of the cold. Maybe that was a little wandering chick. Wandered away. Came back. But there was no room. No room, my friends. No room. It's all taken. But praise God. The arms of my Savior is wide enough. There'll always be room. Always be room, my brother. We don't have to worry. Like the thief on the cross, he came at the last moment. He was about to die, but he said, Lord, remember me. There was room for him. The parable of the, the, the workers... One worker came in the morning, told he was going to, given, going to be given a certain wage. And then all throughout the day, workers kept coming, and the husbandman kept hiring. Final R, last worker came. Hired him too. What wage do you think the last man got? same as the first eternal life because it is for Jesus to give for me maybe I would give him a penny or half a penny or a quarter penny but for Jesus it's his to give and he wants to give every single individual life that's why he died he has paid the price already. We should have had a baptism today. But nobody stepped forward. Nobody stepped forward. We're going to have a one next month, the last Sabbath of the month. By God's grace, somebody will step forward. Because we do not want to stand on the sidelines. As all those people stood on the sidelines and watched him carrying his cross. But nobody stepped forward. Let me help you, Jesus. Let me take the cross. I pray today that we'll step forward. We'll step forward and we said, today is the day I'll take, my, take up my cross. And I will walk. Without shame, no matter what they say to me, without shame, pride in my heart, because Jesus is in my heart. Who wants to walk with Jesus this morning? Is there one here who has not yet given his or her life to the Lord? And you say, today I want to make that commitment. I'm not going to stand on the sidelines any longer. I want to take up. Who want to do that this morning? Who would like to do that this morning? Giving you the opportunity. I don't know if you'll have the, another opportunity. But today I'm giving you the opportunity. This may be my last chance to give you an opportunity to walk with Christ. So I'm making use of it. Who want to walk with Christ this morning? Prepare for baptism. Praise God. Praise God. Who would like to be the second? I thought we would have a crowd running up here. Who would want to be the second? Praise God, my brother.
Praise God, my brother. It's great to see young men standing up for truth. Praise God. Come on down. Let me pray for you. Who else would like to come? Come on down. Who else would like to come? Who else would like to come? I want to give you the opportunity because I do not know what tomorrow will offer. I don't know. But I'm giving you now the opportunity. Don't understand looking anymore, but I want to actively participate in my walk with Christ. Who want to be the second? Who would like to be the second? The third? Who would like to be the third? And the fourth? And the fifth? Leaving it up to the Holy Spirit to touch the hearts today. And I pray that our members will be closing their eyes and we will be praying for those who are struggling. Give them the strength, Lord, to stand up. Stand up. Come down. Stand up. And come down. Who want to be that other person to stand up. And just imagine the heart of Christ as he hung there on the cross. And you look down at all those who were there. And he knew their fate. He knew their fate. Praise God, my brother. Praise God. He knew their faith. Don't hold back, friends. Don't hold back. I don't know why I'm standing here still. I did not plan to stay here this long. Could you sing that song for me, please? The, the, the song that you sang during the, the praise time. Just as I am, please. I don't know why, but something tells me that I need to prolong a little. Give you a chance to come. And as they sing this song, come down if you're desirous of doing that.
I come broken to be mended. I come wounded to be healed. I come desperate to be rescued. I come empty to be filled. I come guilty to be pardoned by the blood of Christ the Lamb. And I'm welcomed with open arms. Praise God just as I just as you are, come to Jesus. I am it would be lost, but mercy and grace, my freedom bought, and now to glory in your cross, O Lamb of God. To be mended, I come wounded to be healed. I come desperate to be rescued. I come empty to be filled. I come guilty to be pardoned by the blood of Christ the Lamb. With open arms, praise God. Just as I am. My friends, come to Jesus. Just as you are. I don't know what's holding you back. But my friends, let go. And let God come to him this morning. I'm not begging. I'm asking. Once you take up the cross, your life will not be the same. You live a more fulfilling life. Come, my friends, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. I am. Let's pray. Our loving God, our Heavenly Father. You are our everything. I praise your name. I praise your name. That we can come as we are, broken to be mended. Whatever our weaknesses, we can come. What, whatever our spots, we can come. Pray, Lord, that you will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Be this young man, this young lady, who have made the decision to walk with you, Lord. It was not an easy decision to make because it's not easy to say yes. But they have said yes. And they want to walk with you. I pray you will strengthen their feet, strengthen their hearts, strengthen their minds that they will live for you. Live lives of grace thank you father and on that day when you will come what a joy it will be when we celebrate eternity with you no there are others lord who want to come but something is holding them back i pray lord that you'll remove the chains and help them to come come to the feet of jesus where they can have life and have life more abundantly. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen.